Let us now have a little look at some fairy real estate. This is where the fairies live. It doesn't look very good to me, Devan. You thought I could have put a bit more effort into that engraving, I would have thought. But anyway, this is from also, this is from 1860. This is a view of the fairy hill. Mentioned there, the mention from the presentment is the first, so should we say, the first mention we have in the record of the fairies. This is the first printed reference we have. So Chevrel, 1702. So Chevrel was one of the governors of the island, wrote an account of the island, and this is the first mention we have of fairies in the sense of this particular mention of the fairy hill. Yet it is still much celebrated amongst the natives by the name of the fairy hill, upon which a very odd story depends that would tire your patience rather than gain your belief. <coughs> you can see already here how in some ways elite culture here just, okay, they, they, you know, there is this vernacular culture here, but you don't really want to know about it, do you? Let me tell you about the bishop or something like that. Let me tell you about bishops of the Isle of Man or so, you know, whatever. Let me tell you about, about something else. But what is interesting about this is that uh, there was an individual whose patience wasn't tired. And so we know exactly what went on at the Fairy Hill. And this comes from Waldron. And this is a great story. I, I love this story. It's stealing the silver cup from the fairies. No need to read all of this. I can summarize for you what it is, or I can re read through it, through it, whatever. This is quite typical. You're out in the countryside, you're out walking, and you hear music that's irresistible. You have to follow this music, fairy music. And it takes you to a spot where you see people eating and drinking, and you just think, God, this is fantastic, you know. I'm going to join in. And when you're joining in, you actually notice that there are faces that are familiar to you. And you wonder, this is, you know, a little bit strange what's going on here. And then someone tugs you on the sleeve and you recognize as someone who you haven't seen for years. And the reason why you haven't seen them for years is because they've been taken by the fairies into fairyland and that's where you are now. It's just so easy to cross from the mortal world into the world of the fairies where their rules work. And in this particular case, there is a taboo. What you do not do, tip for success here, when you're in the fairy realm, do not eat or drink. If you eat or drink anything that's offered to you, you'll stay there forever. And this is what he realized would actually happen to him. And so what he does do when they offer him the cup to drink from, throws it on the ground, all the fairies suddenly disappear. All the mortals who are in fairyland disappear with them as well. And he's left standing there. And then he goes and asks the vicar of Malou, what should he do with the, with the silver cup? And the silver cup, he presents the silver cup to the church. What's down here? If you're a folklorist, you'll know exactly what this means. This is what's known as a migratory legend, and there's a catalogue of such migratory legends. This is migratory legend 6045, drinking cups stolen from the fairies. This story is told all over areas where the Scandinavians settled. So it's known, a core tale that's known in Scandinavia. Outside of Scandinavia, it is only known in areas where the Vikings settled. This is clearly a story that has come with the Vikings, which is turned up in the Isle of Man, which is collected by Waldron, much later collected too by Edward Farragher as well, and Col Colroder as well. So, it's, uh, it's, so this is what went on in the Fairy Hill.